Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the proof of if the matrix space is sequentially compact, then it has BWP. In previous videos, already we have discussed the definition of BWP, that bolzano weierstrass property we have discussed, as well as when we say the matrix space is sequentially compact. Let us recall the definition and then we will go for the proof of this theorem. Okay. See, let me write here sequentially compact. Okay, so when we say the matrix space is sequentially compact, if every sequence has convergent subsequence, every sequence has convergent subsequence, then we say the matrix space is sequentially compact. And what is BWP? Let us see what is BWP. BWP means bolzano weierstrass property. It says every infinite set, every infinite set has limit point. Okay, so every infinite set has a limit point. So this is BWP. So in this theorem, this is given part. Okay, this is a given part. That means every sequence has convergent subsequence. And this thing we have to prove. So this is to prove part. We, what we have to prove? Every infinite set has a limit point. Okay, so yes, we have recalled the definition of sequentially compact matrix space and BWP also we have discussed. So let us start the proof now. Okay. So let me mention here, let XD be a matrix space. I'm considering a matrix space with this condition that is it is sequentially compact and XD is sequentially compact. So this is a given thing. Okay. So every sequence, it is sequentially compact means every sequence has convergent subsequence. Let me write what we have to prove. So to prove, we have to prove that it has BWP. To prove that X has BWP. That means what we have to prove exactly, we have to prove that every infinite set has a limit point. Okay. So for that, we need to have one infinite set and we have to prove that it has a limit point. So let us take one infinite set. Uh, shall we call it as A? So let A be an infinite subset of X. So we have taken infinite set. I am calling it as A and what we have to prove, we have to prove exactly it has limit point. We have to prove that that infinite set has a limit point. So let me draw the diagram so the picture will be clear to you. So this type of matrix space we have, getting this type of matrix space we have XD and I am considering one infinite set, right? So this is infinite set A. And we have to prove that that set A has a limit point, right? So what will I do? Uh, this proof is little bit constructive, right? So I'm going to consider one sequence now, since I want to use the given information. What is the given information? It is sequentially compact. So for that, I need, I have a need of one sequence. So I'm considering a sequence now. Let Xn, I'm considering a sequence Xn having points x1, x2, x3, x4 and so on. So you know that in a sequence there are infinitely many points. So I'm considering a sequence of distinct points of A. So this is set A we have having how many points? Infinitely many points. And for sequence we want how many points? Infinitely many points. So that's why I'm considering a sequence of distinct points. Distinct, that means different different points, okay, of A. Xn BA BA sequence of distinct points of A. So let me show in diagram so the picture will be clear to you. So in this way, distinct different different points. No any point is repeated. Okay, I'm considering a sequence of distinct points of A, right? Okay. So let me remove this part. Okay. So we have a sequence now of distinct points of A. Okay. 
so yes so let us use the given information what is the given information given information is x is sequentially compact sequentially compact means what every sequence has convergent subsequence sequentially compact means what every sequence every sequence has convergent subsequence if you have any sequence it has convergent subsequence but right now we have one sequence that sequence is xn and matrix space is sequentially compact so that's why we can say the sequence xn has also convergent subsequence let me mention here but but xd is sequentially compact getting it is sequentially compact therefore sequence xn has some convergent subsequence therefore sequence xn has convergent subsequence okay it has convergent subsequence so shall we call it as xn k yes let us call it as xn k it has a convergent subsequence and i am calling it as xn k so say xn k so it's a convergent it is convergent it means it converges to some point let us call it as x and xn k converges to x okay so let me show this part in a diagram okay this is not required now so yes so this sequence xn of distinct points of a so it has some convergent subsequence you know that subsequence means we take a point from the original sequence and we form a new sequence so this type of subsequence we have and it converges to some point that is nothing but x right so we have already familiar with the definition of convergent sequence do you remember the definition of convergent sequence yes let us the definition is d of xn x less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital s so this is the definition of convergent sequence and here we have a convergent sequence xn k which converges to x so i can use this definition of convergent sequence but did you see there is one epsilon one epsilon is required so let us take one epsilon first then we will use the definition so let me write here let let epsilon greater than 0 be given i am i am taking i am taking one epsilon now and yes so i can use the definition of this convergent sequence so therefore therefore the definition of convergent sequence says for given epsilon there exist capital n uh, belongs to set of natural numbers there exists a natural number n such that such that so i am using this definition of convergent sequence here xn dxn comma x but we have a su subsequence xn k so i should write here d xn k comma x less than epsilon i am writing the same definition of convergent sequence for all n greater than or equal to capital n okay so yes i use the definition okay see uh, distance between so let me draw one diagram so the concept will be clear to you here we have a x okay and if i consider a ball with center x and radius epsilon so the ball will be like this open ball we have right so the ball will be like this and we are saying distance between x and k and x x and k and x this distance it's less than epsilon we are saying this distance is less than epsilon so we know that if distance of any point from the center of ball is less than its radius it means that points lie lies inside a ball this distance between these two points is less than its radius that means point lies inside and if distance is greater than radius then point lies outside so here the distance is less than radius so that's why what can we write here therefore that x n k belongs to that ball with center x radius epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n okay so this thing we got now okay uh, do you remember i use the word distinct points distinct means different different points so if you remove the center of ball then also there will be many points so i should mention here 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 that x n k not equal to x for infinitely 
many in k so the reason is that that sequence has distinct points different different points so that's why if you remove a single point there will be infinitely many other points right so yes so for infinitely many n k so therefore if you remove a single point doesn't matter so x n k belongs to b x epsilon minus singleton x for infinitely infinitely many in k get it so actually many points we had inside a ball right now we removed center of a ball from it and again we got there are infinitely many points lies inside a set but do you remember that original sequence xn we form that sequence by taking a points of a that means basically what we are doing that thing in uh, inside set a so i should mention here okay make a screenshot of it then i will go further so let us continue but but xn k belongs to a for all n k belongs to set of natural number getting so basically all points belong to set a since we form a sequence xn of points of a right so all xn k belongs to a here we are saying xn k belongs to this punctured disc you can say ball oh, center is removed from the ball so xn k belongs to this set xn k belongs to this set so that's why xn k belongs to intersection also since point lies in a point lies in b then we say the point lies in a intersection b so the same logic i am using so therefore therefore that xn k belongs to intersection of these two sets b x epsilon minus singleton x right intersection a this is true for all natural numbers but this is true for infinitely many natural numbers so i should mention for infinitely infinitely many n k okay so that means this set has infinitely many points but the most important thing is set has points that means set is non empty so therefore this set is non empty since many points are there right minus singleton x intersection a is not equal to 5 since many points are there just like x and k do you remember this thing so this is definition of limit point getting this is definition of limit point so therefore x is a limit point of a i should add one thing i should add one thing that is uh this is true for epsilon but see you do you remember epsilon is greater than 0 be given that means epsilon be anything you can take any positive real number epsilon then it is true for that so i should mention it is true for all epsilon greater than 0 right so this is definition of limit point so that's why i could write x is a limit point of a right you you remember we started with one infinite subset of x a a was the infinite subset of x and finally we got it has a limit point so therefore i can mention therefore therefore every infinite subset a of x has a limit point getting if you take any infinite subset a of x definitely you will have it has a limit point so they, this is nothing but bwp we call it as bolzano weierstrass property this is statement of bolzano weierstrass property so that's therefore we can declare so therefore x has bwp getting therefore x has bwp so we started with sequentially compact matrix space and finally we proved that it has a bwp so therefore we can declare if the given matrix space is sequentially compact 101% it has bwp so in this way we completed its proof make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you